What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the show, the podcast. Today, it's time for honest conversations with me, Kenny. I'm your host. If you're new here, hi, my name's Kenny. If you're a returner, you already know who I am, but that's fine. Today, we're talking about the Father's Day program. We're talking about the Father's Day program several days after its release because it, it is our gateway, or one of several gateways at this point, to talking about content. Now, just a couple announcements. Um, I am on Kick now, kick.com. I'm not streaming there yet. I might not, I might, I don't know yet, but just because the state of streaming seems to be in flux because Twitch can't get out of its own way, I've created a Kick account, I've secured my username, my branding is all on there. Again, I'm not sure if I'll be there yet. I'm not going to do one stream on Kick, one stream on Twitch. I'm either going to be all Twitch or all Kick. Haven't decided yet. In the meantime, make sure you follow me there. Kick.com slash KDJTV. Just in case. It might end up being absolutely nothing. It might end up being something. Only time will tell. And I will, of course, keep everybody updated here and on Twitter. Things like that. I'm not going to do it Do it dark. Not going to go incognito. LOL. To use a MLB The Show word. Excuse me. So, let's talk about the Father's Day program. The Father's Day program was released... Wednesday, Thursday, someday last week to commemorate Father's Day. There was a little conquest map. It was the first conquest map in three weeks. That's, that is just an embarrassment. We should have more conquest maps. I can't believe I'm saying that because I hate conquest, but there need to be more ways for offline players to use the cards they enjoy. End of story. End of story. I hope I speak for offline players who have not had their voices heard. So there need to be more conquest maps. Regardless, the Father's Day program. It dropped in, con in conjunction, excuse me, with a new event, the Have a Catch event. Sometimes these programs, you can get one point for every win in the event. No, they capped you at five this time. You had to get five wins to get five points. The program itself was a bit of a slog. And by a bit, I mean a large one. They dropped one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight new cards. We'll talk about the cards in a second. None of them were pitchers. And you had to get 5,000 PXP combined with those cards to finish the program. For context, 5,000 PXP is like taking a brand new card and P4-ing it. That is an ungodly amount of PXP for non-pitchers and, spoiler alert, cards that suck. Suck. Let's talk about the cards, then we'll talk about the larger issues with this program and content in general. I want to preface this entire conversation, all of it, with I still think sets and seasons work. I think set three's reveal and how it works is going to tell us a lot about the structure in its entirety. So I don't think we can pass full, 100% confident judgment until a couple weeks into set three. Can't do it day one. A couple weeks into set three. But, I don't think sets and seasons is the problem with the last three to four weeks of content. I think content is the problem with the last three to four weeks of content. But let's talk about the cards. You get, first of all, important to say, eight cards were four father-son duos for Father's Day. Super, super cool. It should have been five father-son duos, but we'll talk about that in a minute as one of the larger problems with content. 93 Craig Biggio! Everyone rush to your consoles to go get this absolutely awful card. He's max contact versus left, and 90 power versus left is actually okay. In a vacuum, we can live with that. He's also got 99 bunting, thank goodness. 89 fielding, 85 speed. This card is a, is a, a monstrosity. And it's a 93. When we're working with 99s on day one, which I support, you can't be dropping 93s in a program this long. All of these cards should have been at least 95, at least 96. Throw in some 98s, sprinkle in a god at the end. Instead, we start with 93 Gregory Biggio. Then we get 93 Kevin Biggio. Now... I don't want to slander this card, because I think Kevin Biggio has one of the best swings in this game. 
I think every year his card generates unreasonably good exit velos, and he gets great launch angle. I am a fan of every Kevin Biggio card. But this is only a 93, and I still don't like it. 93 fielding is cool. I have a P2 now, whatever. So 91 fielding. He hits righties well. He hits lefties all right. He's got 106 clutch, even though he might be one of the worst players in, in actual baseball the last couple years. Um, he's Kevin Biggio. He's a BR card, which I will uh, I will take and I will love. For what he is, cool. But a 93 in this type of program? Uh-uh. Dante Bichette. One of the worst swings in this game. You might disagree. I'm just giving you my opinion. I know some competitive players love it. I cannot stand it. That does not mean that's the only reason this card is bad. That's not fair in mostly determining why cards are good or bad. It helps or it hurts, but it's not the end-all be-all. This card sucks because it sucks. It hits lefties really well, but it's only got 103 clutch, so you can't even put it on the bench. Uh, fielding, never heard of it. It can't field. 65 speed is whatever. Uh, it, it hits righties, whatever. This is only a 94 now. We're at card number three. We're at 20 program points. That's a roughly 30-ish percent through the program. Roughly. Mathematicians can correct me if they'd like to. Um, 94 overall. Then we have 95 Bo Bichette. Bo Flows. This card is actually, of all of them, pretty okay. We can't slander this card that much. The big thing holding it back is that it has 71 fielding, significantly better than the live series Bobachette, which is 48 fielding. So they buffed him there. Uh, good contacts versus right and left, decent powers. Bo has a nice swing. He generates good exit velo. Uh, 116 clutch is very good at P1. 95 overall. This card is good for a 95. Some 95s are built like shit. Some 95s are built well. This is at least a well-built 95. If Craig Biggio had been a well-built 93... Maybe I wouldn't be as upset, but that card sucks horseshit. So then we have Bo, who's okay, but still he's only a 95. 95 should have been the first card in the program. We're at the fourth, and we're only up to 95. Next up, 95, Vlad the Impaler. Sick nickname. This card is good only because Vlad's swing is immaculate. Not only. I just said we can't describe that as the way to categorize cards. Uh, but its its attributes offensively are underwhelming. It's funny they picked Vlad Guerrero as the father of the Father's Day card, and they gave him the card when he's 24 years old. Not saying you can't be a father at 24, but he was a grizzled vet later on with his kid running around. Whatever. Um, there's almost no power on this card in rela relation excuse me, to what we expect from Vladimir Guerrero. 99 arm. You can't use this card except BR or events. It's not God Squad material. We still don't have a God Squad Vlad Guerrero, and that makes me upset. Um, but again, fifth card in the program, only a 95. 96, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. This card is okay. 82 fielding, nice, love that. Um, his hitting attributes are set up weird, but it's okay. I think Vladimir Guerrero cards always generate unreasonably good pop, better than their attributes dictate. But he's only got 95 clutch, 94 at base card, so you can't really use him anywhere. Uh, I enjoy his swing, so this card is not my worst enemy. But we're at card 6 now, out of 8, and he's a 96 overall. And then you get 95, we, we're now going down in overalls, Captain Ken Griffey Sr. We knew there was going to be a captain in this program. Because that's how they've been doing it. They want us to use captains. Nobody is and nobody will probably for a long time until they fix them. But they gave us the captain on a program that is PXP based almost last. Why was this not the first card given to us? That's just a little gripe. I think it's fair. Instead, we're doing all the PXP grinding with all these shite cards before we even have the captain to make them better and make the grind easier. SDS, hands in the air. I love you. I really do. I think this game's this year's game is much better than it's been in a while. It, it, truly. But come on. This, 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 this program didn't make sense. And then we cap the program with 97 not even good Ken Griffey Jr., the card art's cool. I love that it says the kid on it. Ken Griffey Jr. is one of my idols and favorite players of all time. Long-time listeners know this. But what on God's earth is this? 
You're giving us a grind, grind, grind program. Remember Grind 99? Remember when you grinded for six hours and you got something that felt good? This was Grind 97. And then go pay for the 299s we dropped in a Diamond Duos pack that should have been in the program to start. They hit us with some really cool new legends that day. Or one new legend, one new player to the game. Matt Holiday is back. That's incredibly cool. This card fucks really, really hard. I actually love this card. And it's going to be on my God Squad when set three starts and I need a new outfielder. Why wasn't he in the program? Why are you putting a new legend behind? I hate using the word paywall, so we'll say stub wall, because I don't think this game is pay to play yet. <laughs> it's not contrary to what everybody is saying. It's getting closer. It's inching there. It's not EA Sports. Don't throw that flag out on me. But this is frustrating. This is a trend I don't like. Matt Holiday was behind a stub wall. New legend, super cool. Father's Day program comes out. There are even moments in the Father's Day program that have Matt Holiday and his son Jackson Holiday. Another crazy good 99. Not as good as his father. That's okay. Still a very good card. Why were both of these not the bosses in the program? <laughs> like, come on! Come on, SDS! Listen, I am not on team handout. I think good players should get good stuff. But I think people who pay for the game should also have access to the stuff. I just... This program threw me for a loop. More so than the Mexico City Series program, which, as you recall, was horseshit. This was bad. Luckily... Matt Holiday's price came down to a semi-reasonable 60k. I think I got him around 65. I wanted him. I had the stubs. I don't mind spending that amount of stubs on a card I want. Once we talk 100, 150k, we got to start talking about reasonable, reasonable investing on cards. Like that's that's a conversation. 65k. If I have it, I'll spend it. That's fine. But they should have been in the program. Or there should have been more Diamond Duo packs in the program. I know there was one Diamond Duo choice in the program, one in the Conquest. Maybe a lot of people got lucky. I was not one of them. That's fine. I'm not bitter. Those packs suck anyway. The odds are terrible. But I just... The content this year is starting to bother me. Again, I love Sets and Seasons, and I don't think Sets and Seasons is the problem. I just think there is some disconnect going on between either who is creating the live content, who is strategizing the live content, and this, listen, SDS people, if you're watching this, again, I cannot reiterate enough, I am enjoying this year's game. I will play this game no matter how the content looks. Maybe that's enabling, maybe that's part of the problem, but I love baseball, and this baseball game is better than it has been, so thank you. Housed, housed ever. Things need to make sense. And in a game that is going to give us 99s early in every set, which is, I think, a breath of fresh air. It's too soon to tell if it is good, bad, indifferent, the same, whatever. It's a breath of fresh air, and I respect the decision. I like it. You can't be dropping... Six to eight hour grinds that don't have a usable card in them. <laughs> Not a single usable card for 75% of the player base. Not, I'm not even talking about competitive people. There are people who don't consider themselves competitive players. They play recreationally and that's fine. And they easily have better players at every position than every card that was dropped in that program. I, I think that's a safe assumption. Please, if I'm off base, correct me. I don't want to be speaking for people and then speaking in, in, incorrectly, so please correct me. But I think I'm, pre I'm pretty close. I can't be that far off base here. The other issue that might not even have been an SDS decision, it might have been a Sony decision, is locking more of the S-tier cards in packs. Not even Chase Packs, which have had four of the best cards in the game. Certainly the best two in Mickey Mantle and Joe Maurer. But also Shohei, which was very usable, and Tatis for like 
a week and a half was very usable. But these alter ego packs, they raised the price on the on the juicy choice packs and made them harder to uh, obtain. They're not giving them out for free as often. They're not in conquest. There are fewer conquests. They're not in every event. And then this compounds with all of the no sale packs to earn the stubs. That's a separate conversation. We've talked about that. For me, it's hit or miss. It depends on the day how I feel. I don't think that's the biggest issue with MLB The Show right now in terms of card collecting. Last year, I had every single card, uh, player card in the game. I didn't collect every equipment item and perk, but player card, I had every single one. Live series, legend, flashback, I had them all. I am not, a, I'm not trying to brag. I am not the only one who did that. Thousands of people probably did that. You, the listener, likely did that at some point. Because if you play the game long enough, you don't have stubs to spend, you don't have things to spend your stubs on anymore. So you just finish your collections and boom, you're done. I have come to accept that I will never have every card in this particular game. That doesn't make me upset per se, but there's cards I'd really like to try that I just will never be able to because with the way the grind is working, you have to keep up with the current stuff with your stubs as opposed to spending them on past stuff because you'll just fall behind. I like grinds. I don't get upset about grinds. Just make my grind worth it. This was our problem with a lot of the monthly programs last year, where a lot of the grinds for the lightning card were just not worth it. They were 93 Anthony Rizzo, or King, I love Anthony Rizzo, but like, or 92 Anthony Rizzo, whatever he was, and he sucked. That at least is alleviated by the fact that lightning cards are now all 99s, as they should have been anyway. So that's good. Welcome change. Check, plus, we're moving in the right direction. But so much of the good cards this year are 99s in packs. There are already even a lot of 98s. I'd love to look at actually how many 98s there are. We're going to do that right now. 98s were sometimes playable in the past, as were 97s. I feel like there have not been any 98 overall cards. On the marketplace, we have... Did I not do this right? Max overall... Oh, I got to also set the min overall. Sorry, I'm stupid. It's got to be 98, 98, so we can see. Not a single one in the marketplace. Did I do that right? Hold on. <laughs> I'm pretty stupid. All right, so these are 99s. We go back. Yep, okay. There's not a single 98 overall on the marketplace, chat. YouTube, Apple, Spotify, your sister's ass, the Pony Express, Vic DiBattetto. I don't know where you're listening, but wherever you're listening, snail mail, there is not a single 98 on the marketplace, unless I'm an absolute moron and did this incorrectly. Now let's try 97. We have a few pages of 97s. One full page, two full page, three full page, four full page, five. All right, we've got roughly six full pages of 97s. That's okay. Where are the 98s? I'm not even singling out 98 as like the linchpin number here, but I'm just pointing out the fact that it's all the good 99s that are hard to get or harder to get or more expensive to get. And then the next tier of essentially available cards is a 97. And there are going to be a lot of people listening who say, good. Be good to get good cards. Not every person or player should have access to every card in the game. And trust me, I hear you and I, and I understand where you are coming from. MLB The Show has long been a game that has catered to the everyday player. Because video games are for everyday people. Not everybody is competitive at every game or even wants to be competitive. They just want to blow off some steam after work, hang out with their buddies, and that's great. That's what video games are for. I feel like only recently every single video game has become a competitive hellscape. So to people who say that not everybody should have every card, I cannot say I 100% agree. I think every card should be accessible to people, perhaps in different ways than if they were competitive. And I think that is becoming an incredibly difficult thing to do in MLB The Show 23. I'm trying my best to articulate my thoughts here. I think I'm doing a decent job, and I hope you are all seeing where I'm coming from. 
it's just so ironic that the last couple of years we were like, content's good, game sucks. And this year we're like, game is better, content no, no, no good, no bueno, it's a little poo-poo. I am concerned that it's always one step forward, two steps back. I love this game. I love baseball. MLB The Show, this is going to be the stupidest thing anyone's ever heard. Means a lot to me. <laughs> For a variety of reasons. When I was younger, it helped me bond with my brother. We played head-to-head -head all the time. It, it brings back memories of me coming home from school and firing up the PlayStation and playing MLB before it was even the show. It brings me memories of during the pandemic keeping me sane and starting this very weirdly strange and awesome content creation journey that I'm on. The game means a lot to me. I am always going to play it. But I just want it to be what it should be. And I feel like there are very concerning trends right now. Again, I don't know who's calling the shots. It could certainly be a money thing where they're trying to get more people to buy stubs. You can be your own judge of whether buying stubs is good or bad. If you have money to spend, only you know your finances, buy them if you want. Don't go broke on stubs. You know, people spend $100 on the game. They don't want to spend any more, want to play no money spent. This is a game you can do no money spent. Ultimately, you can use 90 overall cards in Ranked on Legend, and it's up to you to be good with them. If you're good with them, who gives a crap what, what they're rated? That is why this game will never be pay to play. Because having a God Squad of all 99s versus a God Squad of all 90s, which is not really a God Squad, shouldn't have said that. But having 99s versus 90s does not automatically mean the 99s are going to win. They definitely have an advantage. But ultimately, it comes down to your skill on the stick. So that's where I get upset when people say pay to play. It's not. Or pay to win, rather. It's not. You are the determining factor whether you win or lose. It's different than other sports games. But man, it's, it's upsetting and concerning the, 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 the trend that the content is going in. I don't know what the answer is. Maybe go back to how it was last year and have the gameplay how it is now. That might make me a little happier. I don't think this is a sets and seasons problem, though. Do you guys see why I'm saying that? Because nothing we've talked about has to do with sets or seasons. You could argue they're trying to just give us more collection fodder so we could fill up and get the set collections. I don't think that's a sets and seasons problem. I think that's a problem with the way they've structured them this year. <laughs> They could always fix the structure in the content schedule to make it make sense. The problem is in the scheduling of content and the locking... So the word lock here we're using softly. Locking cards behind stub packs or stub walls and packs. I don't know where we go from here. I hope set three, which comes out in... When does it come out? 17 days from the time of recording, so two and a half weeks. I hope set three is a banger. I'm pretty sure we're going to get all-star content. I hope it <laughs> I hope it picks up from the really really slow last 3 to 4 weeks of content we've had. I just don't want to be concerned about content because we haven't had to be concerned about content in several years. And I hate hearing or reading the discourse on Twitter where people are like, "Oh, it's pay to win. I'm never going to be good. You can still be good, guys. I promise you can still be good." Or at least have fun. You can still have fun. They have done a very good job of like, yeah, here's 99 Hank Aaron who's incredible and hard to get with collections. But here's 97 Hank Aaron. Like, you could still use your favorite player. You might not be able to use his best version. But you could still use your favorite player. That's a positive. I see that there. But man, the difference between 99 Hank Aaron and 97 Hank Aaron is crazy. The 99s, I think they're finally treating them like 99s which maybe is refreshing. It's just kind of harder to get them. And ultimately, you are your own judge of whether that's fun or not fun, whether you're okay with it, whether you're not, whether you can respect the grind or not. I just think for a game that's always preached grind 99, it's just a little bit less of that than, than what we're used to. And it's, it's, it's frustrating. But, but... This is where we're at. This is the game we're playing. This is what we have to deal with. I ultimately think there are a lot of good cards in this game. And I ultimately think there are a lot of value cards in this game that people should 
be okay using. The number in the top right corner only means so much. It's up to you to play well with the cards you have. But guys and girls, that's this episode. I wanted to get all of this stuff off my chest and hopefully do it in a semi-relatable and digestible manner. I hope I didn't sound like a fool, because sometimes I do. But that has been this episode of the show, the podcast. Let me. This is this is a conversation piece. This is a topic that people are going to want to talk about. So let's talk about it down below, civilly. Let's talk about it like humans. Let's not yell at each other. Let's not make fun of people. Let's not say get gooder, unless it's just to laugh at me and probably just do it because you're trying to stir stuff up. Shane, Scott, you all know who you are. Calling people out now. But... <laughs> And I call them out in fun, in jest. But that is this episode, guys. Thank you for listening. Thank you for making it to the end. Check out all the content this week on YouTube. YouTube.com slash KDJTV611. That's it. Love you all. See you next time.